Women in, uh, uh, are totally outnumbered by men, accounting for less than 7% of the world's leaders and only 24% of lawmakers. That's according to the latest uh, statistics. UN General Assembly President Maria Fernanda Espinosa told uh, delegates to the Commission on the Status of Women uh, this week that there has been a serious regression in the political power of women across the world in recent years. Now, among the attendees was Diane Keita, Minister of Cooperation, African Integration Republic of Guinea. Uh, uh, Honorable Kita, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you Good for to having see you me. Here in the studio. Thank you. Yes. Now, you know, you were at this meeting at the UN, and uh, first, uh, the president, as I mentioned, the president of the UN General Assembly, Espinosa, <coughs> said that uh, there's a regression in political power. Uh, and, you know, maybe she's talking in a global sense. But when you look across the continent of Africa, some people say, in fact, there's been progress. We're seeing more women in positions of power. What's your take? Well, globally, there are some kind of regress. But it's true that in Africa, there are a lot of progress, a lot of progress. Now we have even two countries that are fully for parity, gender equality. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are more and more women ministers, more and more women governors, and more and more women really taking leadership position in Africa. Yes. Well, still some would say not enough. Uh, well, there are so many women, <clears throat> very competent, holding uh, really responsible positions, very intelligent women in different institutions. But what is it, uh, in your assessment, makes uh, political positions a little challenging and a bit different than uh, positions in the private sector, for example? Probably because some of the positions are already taken. <laughs> You don't just take men out of that job. So you've got to kick them put, out. Yeah, no, that's not the way to do uh, it. Gender okay. equality is more balanced than that. Yes. So there are very fine uh, men out there. Yeah. But it's more and more proof that for some of those positions, women are better equipped to really have the balance, climate change, good governance, mm -hmm. uh, peace and security. Because they tend to be uh, more sure of thinking about the family, thinking about their environment. Yeah, it's true. Well, they're motherly, right? Absolutely. <laughs> but uh, now, um, you, you get the sense that uh, in uh, most of our societies, there are more women than men. It's a yes, fact. Yes. And the question is, though, what are some of the obstacles that make it impossible for this balance to be attained? The, really, the first balance as well is the personal well-being sometimes. You know, less women want to tend to go to do the fight to get into politics. Mm -hmm. That's, it's, it's need to have the fight. They have sometimes other issue yeah. uh, to take care of. And as well, I think one of the most important parts of it as well is really, really the question of education. Some of the women, especially in West Africa, they are more entrepreneurial than political. Yeah. Because then they can, you know, give a subsistence to their family. Yeah. So probably this is the the, the, the part of making now, it very of difficult. Now, of course, the education, and perhaps in, uh, depending on the country, okay. uh, there could be some unique uh, challenges. And what I know is that there have been so many forums where things have been discussed. It looks like it is known what the obstacles are. Question is, do you see any deliberate effort across the continent to really remove this obstacle so that women can attain to this position? Absolutely. I think there is a definite, definitely shift in paradigm of gender equality throughout the continent, throughout African Union, ECOWAS, all those regional women as really being at the center stage of everything. Mm -hmm. And if I take my own country, mm -hmm. our motto, the motto of the president is uh, feminiser and rajeunir. It means, you know, more women and more younger people. Yes. And really we're getting there. Okay, younger people, I hope that includes me. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about, <laughs> uh, you know, politics but by its nature is believed to be a really dirty game. I'm sorry, uh, but it has been proved all, all over the world. Question is, uh, is it possible for women to behave differently if they attain to political position despite of the nature of politics and the corrupting nature of politics? I think so, yes. I think so. I'll take my own case. I come from the humanitarian world. So what I try to do, the little I'm trying to do, is to better the life of the people, to mobilize resources for the other sector to do good. You know, in Guinea, for instance, this is the first time in our history that we are 152 out of 150 countries in doing business. We are getting better. So maybe the political world is corrupted, yeah. but not all of it. Some part is doing very good. It won't corrupt and, you. 
No, no, uh. because we need to do the job. <laughs> it's tough, though. It is tough. But we, do, we need to do the job, and oh, we right. are doing the job. It's like there. swimming and playing in the mud without getting, getting dirty. Now, question, uh, another, I think it's a critical question here. Why is it more important, and uh, but we might be repeating ourselves here, for women to be in positions, especially political positions in leadership? Because probably and certainly, if I take it in my own case, we tend to be more balanced in the life issues. We tend to take care of either the political side only for the politician, but also the environment, the economical, the health. Health is important. Women still die in giving birth. So it's not just balancing for the sake of it, but it's oh, that no. women will bring in a different kind of approach. A different perspective, yeah. because they are really the, the basis of the family in that part of the region. That's why I think it makes all the difference mm -hmm. when you have women in politics, because we don't tackle the issues the same way. Mm -hmm. We are much more down to earth than trying to make a career. We are yeah. there usually to solve an issue. Yeah, I would say I just hope women can maintain that part, that femininity, that motherliness, because if they try to be like some crazy men, then there's no hope in society. And, and that would you. be terrible for us. <laughs> be terrible. We're not there thank, yet. Thank you very much for being <laughs> with us here I today. thank you so much. Uh, that's uh, uh, Honorable uh, Dean Cato, who is the Minister of Cooperation and African Integration in the Republic of Guinea.